Um, so everybody, uh, welcome everybody to the October 18th communi uh, 2021 uh, Community Resources Meeting. Uh, this meeting is being held virtually and it is being both audio and video recorded. Um, and Laura, could you take the roll call? Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Foster. Here. And Councillor Thorpe. Here. Okay. Uh, we have a, we have everybody here. So uh, this is where we do public comment. And um, Tatum, do you want to say anything during public comment? Um, I don't think so. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. We have on the agenda next is the minutes of the September 20th meeting. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve. Second. Okay. Um, all, uh, any discussion on approving the September 20th, 2021 minutes? Hearing no discussion, Laura, can I have a roll call? Sure. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, let's see, uh, we have this running item here called updates and announcements from committee members. And I'm gonna move that down um, on the agenda here. Since we have Carolyn here, who uh, is here to speak about uh, the two uh, zoning items that were referred to us by city council. Um, let's see, item number, the first item, item A is 21.38, an ordinance to amend section 350-17 FFR district and section 353-4 zoning map to include recreation land referred to community resources and legislative matters and the planning board on 9-22-21. Could I get a motion to, uh, for a, a recommendation to council to put this on the floor? Move a positive Move. recommendation. Second. All right, Councillor Foster, then Councillor Jarrett. Okay, and um, so that item is on the floor and um, and Carolyn is here to discuss it. Um, and uh, we'll do these both in order here. We'll get this one out of the way and then we'll put the other one on the floor. So um, Carolyn, um, thank you for being here. And uh, that, uh, that I, I, I wanna thank you for talking with me and Laura last week. It really uh, enlightened us a little better as to what is going on here. And, um, and I'm hoping you can do the same for the, the counselors here as well. So you have the floor. <laughs> um, good afternoon. So the, the ordinances, the two ordinances related to farms, forests, and rivers is what we refer to them currently, um, are in front of you um, as sort of, it's been sort of this long um, standing, um, idea that we would um, slowly transition um, this piece of uh, zoning to a different um, category to, to overlap or to include properties that are permanently protected open space. So it's very clear from, you know, up above looking at the zoning map that these maps are protected parcels and are not available for development. Um, we originally, and I don't know the exact date, but I'm just going to guess 30 years ago, um, the city adopted a farms, forest and rivers zoning. Um, oh, um, zoning district to as a tool to um, be tied with a transfer of development rights so that we would protect farm farms, forests, and river areas from development by allowing owners to essentially sell 
development rights that might be on those ecologically important or agriculturally important parcels, get some money out of them, but um, shift those development rights over to actually the state hospital was the first receiving area, which is the way transfer of development rights works. You have sort of the sending parcel that sends development rights to a receiving parcel. And it's really good in theory, but in practice, it's very complicated to pull together um, that kind of uh, development scenario where you've got two willing property owners and potentially sometimes it's the same owner and that would work really well. It's very easy, but when you have two different property owners and you have a parcel that you're trying to protect on one side of the city, but new density that you wanna to add to another part of the city, it um, can be quite complicated. And as a result, it's never been used um, in that way. We have zoning that identifies the land that we want to, that is protected. Um, but there was never the tie to the transfer development rights. And originally, and, and all of this was also created before we had zoning in place for the redevelopment of the state hospital. And so once we had the zoning for the state hospital that allowed, um, un, you know, basically any density, as high density as, as um, the planning board could or would approve, there wasn't really any incentive to buy development rights from other areas in the city anyway. So, but it's still been hanging around on the books. And um, more recently, we've been using farms, forests, and rivers zoning to rezone um, city owned conservation areas. So, as the city uh, buys land, Mineral Hills, Sawmill Hills, you know, all over the city um, that, that are parcels within, um, that are owned by the Conservation Commission or um, overseen by the Conservation Commission. We've rezoned those as farms, forests, and rivers because it then is sort of the signal on the map saying, these are our open spaces, these are protected lands. So the next, um, the, the, um, issue that we've been discussing over the last several years is wouldn't it make sense to identify all the parcels in the city that have some kind of development restriction on them that doesn't allow um, commercial or residential or any type of development wouldn't it make sense to also have those as farms forests and rivers even though they're privately owned parcels they're not owned by the city it's just um, sort of a mapping um, visual identifier for people to know, okay, these lands all over the city are permanently protected. So A, as you know, if someone's interested in wanting to make sure that we're preserving eco ecologically um, sensitive areas, they would know, oh, that land's already protected. Or B, if someone's looking to develop, they know that even, um, they, they know that those large expanses of property are not available for development. So as part of that, we also wanted to restructure the definition of what farms, forests, and now what we're calling recreation are, because they, and also expand and very clearly define what would be allowed within that zoning category so that um, it's, uh, it allows some activities, um, so it's not completely off limits for, um, trail building or um, structures that might be important to put on a property to um, store equipment that's used to manage the property or to um, uh, in some cases house uh, um, people who are managing the property. Um, so it, it clearly creates sort of a list of things that are allowed in those areas. Um, and that don't constitute development. Um, but it's not saying that these are allowed everywhere because there are certain permanently protected um, restrictions on property that are even more specific to that unique parcel. So the zoning will not um, give, give more rights or take away rights from land that's already um, protected because those specific covenants or restrictions on the parcels are not changing. They're recorded at the registry of deeds and there's nothing the city can do to modify those. 
Um, and then we've included parks as part of it. So we're transitioning from rivers to recreation because Look Park and Child's Park are uh, proposed to be brought into this. So we wanted to also identify and acknowledge that we have these great park resources, but again, they're permanently protected under Article 97, so they could never be built upon, but we want that to show up on the city's maps as well. And so urban parks are treated very differently from conservation areas, where in conservation areas, you might just have trails, you might not, you might have more passive recreation, whereas, you know, at Look Park, you're gonna have lots of different activities and the functions there that are um, fee-based help support the, the long-term maintenance and upkeep of those parks. So that's why there's a uh, language in the ordinance that speaks to that, those kinds of activities. So um, any questions? <laughs> Counselors? Councilor Jarrett. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, so a couple of questions about the map. So will we have to, we'll have to come back and add more parcels as they get these conservation restrictions or they're bought by the city. Um, I know this is from 2020 and there's some parcels like the Wilbur parcel um, that aren't on there. Um, so, so does that, does it make sense to update that now or uh, will we just come back every couple of years and add add parcels? Um, so what we've been doing over the last couple of years um, is um, sort of, like you said, after a year or a year and a half, if there are several more parcels, we would put it into a package to send to council to say, okay, here are the newly protected lands that we want to transition them into this FFR zoning instead of doing it each time a parcel comes in. And so, no, I wouldn't recommend that we that this map get amended at this point because we'll just throw the newly acquired parcels into that pile um, for to look at in another 10 months or whatever when we have other parcels to come together as a package to city council. Okay. And then there's some sort of strange shapes that I guess they appear to exclude some wetlands in the western part of the city. They don't correspond to the parcel lines. Could you explain those? Sure. Um, so uh, I forgot to mention as well, there are some areas that are permanently protected, but they all they include the 100 year uh, mapped FEMA mapped flood plain. And so we're not um, adding that to the FFR layer because this excludes any area that's a floodplain because um, floodplains have their own set of rules for what kinds of structures are allowed or what kind of other um, improvements might be allowed. And so um, again, it's sort of trying to make it as clear as possible. So there are parts of parcels that are uh, have a conservation restriction, but they're also in the floodplain and those portions of the properties did not come in. The other piece, that, that the reason why it doesn't come is these are not coterminous with property boundaries are uh, because um, there are parcels in which there might be, let's say 20 acres and five acres are allocated for the, a house and the surrounding yard area and sort of the improvements for that to support that house. But the back, you know, 15 acres have an agricultural preservation restriction on them. And so we have many parcels in the city that fall into that category um, where it's just really um, the conservation restriction is surveyed and it's all identified in the record where that line is, um, but it doesn't um, encompass the entire legal parcel of the property. Right. Okay, thanks for that explanation. Mm -hmm. I'm chairing while on the move here. Okay, um, any other questions? All right, uh, Carolyn, I have, uh, let's see. Um, let's see the, um, so this is, 
the the land that we're talking about here to to be clear is a uh, land that already has some sort of restriction on it already it embedded in the deed so and that the when we're saying oh you know somebody can sell beverages that they want that's only if it's allowed in the deed like at a place like look park look park right cool all right and and um and just to uh, maybe i so are we eliminating that sending res receiving of development rights uh, because it just never worked out? Correct. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, let's see. And then the other thing is um, you, in terms of the outreach, I, I know you and I talked about this in the planning department. I believe you sent out 118 letters. Is that what it was? Um. Yes, approximately. Yeah, 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 it was a lot of letters out, out to the property owners so that the folks affected by this, um, you know, have received a letter in writing as to that this is being discussed. And um, and you also had a public hearing, oh, two, three weeks ago, and, okay. and, and there were, uh, what, two or three folks that showed up to talk about what was going on and right. what kind of feedback did they provide? Um, I think it was the, the one person was, um, wanted to make sure that it wasn't, that this wouldn't affect their underlying restrictions that are already recorded for the property. Um, I don't know if it was at the hearing or before the hearing, there was a comment or a concern that, um, about whether or not this would allow hunting on the property, um, which has been a hot topic issue in the city over the last few years. But again, this ordinance doesn't do anything to what's allowed on a property um, currently, or even, you know, that's more of a, that's a management issue. It's not a land use um, regulation or an allowance. Like um, hunting is about land management, not about the underlying uses. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks for those answers. Um, sure. Any other questions? Okay. We have a motion on the floor to send this back to city council with a positive recommendation. Um, I think discussion, I don't hear any more discussion. Um, Laura, how about a roll call? Councillor um, Nash? Yes. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. And Councillor Thorpe? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, next up, item B, 21.319, an ordinance to require installation of EV charging stations in parking lots over, tw of over 25 spaces uh, referred to us and legislative matters in the planning board back on 922. And, um, and just a, a note that um, for, for outreach around this, I, I contacted both Amy K. Elaine with the DNA and also um, uh, the, the chamber as well. Um, so that they're aware that this was being discussed here. So anyway, so Carolyn's here, and Carolyn, you want to give us a, a overview of this? Uh, sure. So this is, um, you know, a progression in our efforts um, at trying to um, create incentives and a regulatory structure to help get us towards meeting our uh, climate goals um, that were identified in the recently adopted. Um, resilience and regeneration plan. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, we have a section in the zoning that um, uh, section nine, 350 section nine that deals um, with cars and parking and other um, uh, dimensional requirements, the number of parking spaces, how to you know, the trees required in parking lots and those kinds of things. So um, this would be an um, 
added um, section to that um, portion of the code that would require that um, new or expanding parking lots that um, are created and provide 25 or more parking spaces um, include, and originally the way it was written, um, it would include charging stations and conduit for charging stations. The planning board had some discussion about this and thought that it was kind of confusing language and that um, it should be simplified. And so coming out of the planning board, they recommended a modification that essentially eliminates um, subsection J there in front of you. And um, I would, uh, subsection I would read for new or expanded parking lots that result in the provision of 25 or more spaces, one electrical vehicle charging space for 15 parking spaces shall be installed. So, um, in, and I, there's a lot of back and forth about um, when conduit would be required, what would be the point of that, and if we really just want to have a threshold of 15, you know, at 15 parking spaces, just talk about charging spaces as opposed to differentiating between conduit and, and um, ports. So that's how it came out of planning board. Um, uh, this is only, again, it's only for expansion of parking lots or if a new project comes in um, that would require, um, you know, 25, if the zoning triggers either the need for 25 spaces or the proponent wants to create that big of a lot, that they'd have to include charging spaces. All right, thank you. Um, Councillor Foster. Hi. Uh, Councillor Jarrett did have his hand up, I, I don't mind. Oh, okay, well, I, I saw him like, hi. <laughs> Mine was just procedural, I think. Did we make a positive, did we put it Oh, on yeah, the yeah, yeah, we need a motion, thank you. Yeah, so, um, thank Move you. Move a positive recommendation. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, and who's seconding? Me. All right, thank you, Councillor Thorpe. Okay, um, we have a motion on the floor to discuss this. Um, Councillor Foster. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Nash. Councillor Jared, I could tell it was like something pressing. So, um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Carolyn, I guess I have maybe three thoughts slash questions about this. Um, I, I uh, think it's great that we're codifying electric vehicle charging stations into our ordinances. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to put that one up. <laughs> um, uh, well, sorry. I can, yeah. Oh yeah, there it, okay. So I guess I'll, I'll share my three thoughts and our questions and then love your feedback. Um, one is how you arrived at that ratio. When we first saw this in council for referral, um, I was concerned that we might want a little bit higher ratio. So actually the one to 15 um, sounds good given where we're heading with mileage goals um, and things like that for, for car sales. Um, but then like, as you're talking, I have it in my head that maybe somebody doesn't wanna pay for two vehicle charging spaces. So they put in a 29 spot parking lot. Um, and and um, so just putting that out there. And then I guess my last thought is if there's um, any consideration or thinking toward a parking lot owner and whether or not they're selling access to the EV charging stations, um, if that's something that we may wanna, um, you know, put into this ordinance or, or um, a future amendment around um, any regulations around charging for it. So, um, and I was trying to share the modifications and for some reason it didn't come up, but here, I'll just put this up so everyone can see the language. Um, now, can you see that? Or no? Okay, with the red lines? Yep. Okay. So, um, first of all, I'll say that we already have 25 parking spaces as a threshold, as a tier in the zoning for um, parking lots that 
trigger certain things like for tree planting and um, for center islands to be placed in the parking lot. So there's no magic number around 25, except that it's already there as a trigger for other things. Um, and um, I think the confusion for the planning board around having sort of two standards for 25 or more spaces um, and at what point you put conduit in and then what point you actually put the number of spaces and they just felt like that. Um, it, if we really just want to encourage charging spaces, then the developer will figure out how much conduit they need, where they need to put it. Um, uh, so that's that piece. Um, the other question was about um, whether we are going to regulate uh, property owners' um, uh, access provisions for people. So if they're going to charge to charge to charge, <laughs> um, we had uh, so it, um, if, if that was your question, right? Uh, about that. Um, yeah, I'm wondering, and of course it would be different for say like a private property or, or I don't. I just yeah, I'm curious how that where that may be go what direction that might be going in the future but yes as you know would we consider regulating a property owner's ability to charge for the use of those spaces um or you know in a different rate structure than the other spaces that don't have an ev charging station yeah you know i think that it really should be up to the market to determine whether or not that's a viable solution or opportunity for a property owner. Um, I know currently, you know, I think owners still think there's a little bit of cachet by having a charging station in their property. It might attract people to come to their business or, um, and, but at the same time, there's a cost, you know, there's a cost of electricity, but I, and so I don't know what the inter or behind the scenes, um, you know, business model is for when a, a property owner um, makes arrangements with these different charging companies. Um, and so I, you know, I think at the moment, there are people that say you can't park in my parking lot unless you're charging. Um, and so that it's not, um, and there may be some relationship also with doing business in on that property. But we have, I mean, the short answer is no, we haven't um, thought about going down that path. Um, we don't, we, it's not traditionally where the zoning uh, usually um, ends up uh, in terms of sort of trying to uh, dictate or, or regulate how uh, private owners charge for different services. Okay. I was trying to look up how much it costs to charge a car. <laughs> now I'm back. Well, and you know, at some, at some point, I know the city's been, I don't know if the city still gives free electricity for um, charging, but there is a cost to it. So, <laughs> I mean, someone's paying. Um, so. Councillor Jarrett. Just to follow up, um, I think Councillor Foster also asked, how was the number arrived at the 15 to one for the 25 to one originally, I guess, with 15 to one. Oh, and then also it. about, will someone try to skirt that? Um, I think again, because we have 15 and 25 at different points in our, um, in our ordinance that trigger different things. So the different amount of trees or different. So in particular, we have a, a requirement of one tree per every 15 parking spaces. So it's really just using that same threshold that we have in the zoning for other items so that we're not creating a whole bunch of different, you know, triggers for different um, elements that we want in a parking lot. So to the extent that we can keep them sort of consistent with you know, one number, I think it's simpler. Um, and an applicant might try to avoid providing, um, 
you know, avoiding having two spaces, but at the same time, some of these stations have two cable, two um, ports anyway, um, when you buy them. So you, so each stanchion can support charging two vehicles at a time. Um, so one that counts for two anyway. So I'm not sure that would be an and of course you want to most people when they're building parking lots they're trying to squeeze in as many spots as they can <laughs> so um i don't know that that would become an issue um for people just trying to avoid their the responsibility carolyn how many um I how many situations do you project we might see this um, this ordinance kick in over the next you know year or two? Um, I mean, it's you're just I'm asking you to speculate, but it it's typically if we're talking about a new development or, an, or somebody redoing their parking lot, right? So you know. Um, I can imagine um, reconstruction of, say, you know, the Bridge Road nursing home is um, has been purchased, and someone might come in and um, with a plan to redevelop that. And that, my guess is, is going to have more than twenty five parking spaces. So I know that's a big project that's going to be forthcoming, um, and. You know, there are probably various commercial. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of any plans that I know that are forthcoming for a commercial lots. Um, the other thing is, I, I mean, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be in effect for residential and commercial. So if there's a larger, like I said, Bridge Road, or if there's a larger um, condo development um, of, let's say, 12 units or more you're probably gonna have a parking space with a parking lot or parking created for 25 parking spaces. So that might be a situation um, where it would trigger this, but I don't, I mean, it's a handful, I guess. Um, I don't see a lot of projects in the next year that this would, um, where this would be triggered. And, and, and are there any exceptions? Like things I've thought of is like, um, I, you know, I don't know if people go to church expecting to charge their car or uh, people at a funeral home, but I would imagine, you know, people going shopping or, you know, I, I would imagine there would be demand for that. Um, I, so are there any provisions for that or? Um, well, um, I'm trying to think I don't know of any new churches coming online. <laughs> um, and so, in fact, I can think of several that are not <laughs> ever coming back. Yeah, I know um, of a few too. <laughs> but certainly, you know, there are redevelopments or minor amendments that people, where, where applicants, developers might create, maybe not even 25 parking spaces, but it, they might require a planning board special permit and the planning board could also require a charging station as part of that. In fact, that happened with Big Y. So they were building a gas station. So there's a lot of discussion about the impacts um, and of, of that gas station. They weren't building 25 new parking spaces, but they, and they already have two charging, at least two charging, um, spaces at Big Y, but they're going to add another one. So there are other smaller projects that wouldn't, by regulation, um, directly trigger this requirement that might come to pass. And frankly, I think um, I think developers are doing this um, voluntarily anyway because they want to be. Uh, they want to create space for people to come to their business or create an incentive for them, for people to come. So um, I think in some ways that it might, they might come regardless of this. 
but this at least gives a floor, you know, a, a requirement for um, an expectation for the larger projects. Well, now that I think about it, you know, somebody going to a funeral may have forgotten to charge their vehicle as well. So, they, you know, people get distraught and things. So, um, all right. Uh, any other questions from counselors? Okay, um, so uh, with no more discussion, uh, Laura, can we get a roll call? Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Foster. She's trying to unmute, I think. Okay. Sign language. <laughs> I can't see her, so we she's count nodding her up? Head. Is she texting their response? <laughs> so she's she's nodding affirmatively, it looks like. Okay. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so that um, passes. Just a procedural. Go ahead. Uh, did we were we to giving a positive recommendation as written or as amended by the planning board? Oh, you know, Councilor Jarrett, you're so good at this. Thank you. Because <laughs> yeah. it did change once we started discussing it. Um, uh, yes, so I think we voted on as, as we put it on the floor. And so we might, I, I, I would think that we would want to have a recommendation as it is written. So, um, so Laura, what do we do here? <laughs> Good question. Well, only the legislative matters can make the amendment, right? Is it possible? I mean, I, I guess you could. Yeah, and we're not making the so amendment. We just want to uh, weigh in. Indicate that you're in favor of the amendment. Yeah. yeah so do we? Uh, so do we um, ask to uh, you know? Re rescind our, our previous recommendation and then do another one with um, or I think maybe you know, do a vote on with the just, amendments or just move to clarify that the um, approval is with the language as amended by the planning board okay so somebody sure. want to make that <laughs> Uh, I'll move to clarify that the uh, recommendation is based on the is is for the language as recommended by the planning board. Second. Okay. So, uh, any discussion on that motion? I see we lost Councillor Foster. Um, <laughs> yep, we did. I'm going to say roll call. Let me see if she texted me. Hmm. Um, had to restart ARG. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, well, I'll take this moment while she's restarting to say thank you to Carolyn for being here and helping clarify all of this. And very, that was very helpful. And I also want to thank you for all of the outreach with uh, around the FFR. And um, I, I think that was very substantial and impressive. And um, anybody else have some have something nice to say while we're waiting for <laughs> Councillor Foster. Joining now. <laughs> Coming in. Uh, Thank you, you stop it. No more nice things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councillor Foster, uh, you had, I, were you, uh, did you hear that we're, uh, we're uh, taking a vote on, um, uh, re, uh, what, what was the word? We're approving it as, am as amended. Okay, I heard Councillor Jarrett raise that point. I had flipped away to look at the agenda and then could not get back to Zoom, so. Okay, so yeah. right now we're up to, uh, we're about to close discussion on that. And do you, do you have anything you wanna add? I don't, thank you. Yeah, and we, we got through the, the, the airtime complimenting Carolyn. <laughs> All right, thank so you. now let's go to a, a roll call for the amendment, for the amended version. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. 
Okay. All right. Positive recommendation to council for that. Um, thank you. Yeah, Carolyn, thank you. You can go. Thank you. That was okay. very helpful. <laughs> okay. You. See you later. <laughs> okay. Uh, on the agenda, we had item four, updates and announcements from committee members. I, I think we threw that in because sometimes people want to um, uh, update people before uh, we get to the items on the agenda. And, um, and, and sometimes it might be related. Um, any, is there anything anybody wants to talk about? Uh, Councilor Nash, do, do we want to, uh, you know, we discussed November's meeting and um, zoning. Do we want to just give a uh, preview? Of yeah, that? Well, if you could do that real quick, that would be great. Sure, yeah. So um, we wanted to <clears throat> talk about uh, have, a, have a time on our agenda to talk about future zoning changes um, with a broad bird's eye perspective and invited, want to invite Carolyn Mish to come and, um, and of course, members of the community uh, to, to think about, you know, what is the planning department uh, looking at for your future zoning changes? Um, and, you know, what are our ideas? What are community members' ideas? And um, all within the context of that, you know, we make these zoning plans based on the adopt, adopted plans of the city. They need to be consistent with, you know, the sustainable Northampton plan, our comprehensive plans, the climate plan, et cetera. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, in that, in that context. Um, so it's not the, that, that we do take individual public comment at at sessions into account, of course, in, in whether or not or how we adopt a particular ordinance, but that the um, that it's that it's the the long term plans that are the primary uh, focus. So that that that's our thought, and we have a uh, Councilor Nash and I have a meeting with Carolyn to to think about that. Sounds like fun, huh? <laughs> uh, I, I, I can think of a few people who might want to show up and join us. I bet Jackie Balance will want to <laughs> hop right in. So um, anyway, um, any other uh, things people want to mention here? Okay, uh, we, that can, we have uh, uh, finished our agenda here. And um, could I get a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in. Uh, so uh, we can't do the voice votes. Uh, roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>